So now that I've done uh, species equals Satosa and species does not equal Satosa, I can go and name these. So I can call this Iris Satosa. So now over here in my global environment, I have Iris Satosa. It's 50 observations. And here I can say Iris no Satosa are my non Satosa observations. So here I have Versicolor and this one, Virginica. I'm not an iris, I'm not a botanist, so maybe I'm saying these completely incorrectly, but there we go. So now what I'm doing is I'm sorting out and splitting up my data. I'm taking my raw data and starting to change it based on what I want to do. Okay, uh, so that's filter. I could also do something like, uh, let's say I want to make a new variable. Let's say I want to figure out the area of a petal. So here we can see that in uh, just plain old iris, I have petal length and petal width. So if I multiplied those, length times width, I should be able to get petal area. Roughly, right, if the petal was square. Okay, so what I could do is iris pipe, remember it's control shift M, and sometimes it'll do that. They just get rid of that second data name. I want to use the verb called mutate. And what I'm going to do is say petal underscore, well, they use periods, so petal underscore area equals petal dot length times petal dot width. If I run that, now I have a new uh, column in my data file with the area of the petal for each observation, for each petal that I have. Now right now it's just printing it to me in the window because I didn't assign it. So what I can do is say iris is iris, like that. And now if we look over in the global environment, iris which used to have five variables now has six. If I open it, I have petal.area. So here I see uh, for these two uh, petals, the area is 0 0.28, 0 0.26, 0 0.3, so on, so on, so on. So now I've created a new variable. I've mutated the data file. Cool. Um, so already you should be able to see how you can start using the verbs from the tidyverse. These are all dplyr verbs. Filter, mutate, select, summarize, um, group, ungroup. You can use these to start um, taking raw data and processing it into what you will then do an analysis on. So we have uh, this, now we can do one more thing. Let's say um, we want to look at the average uh, petal area by species, right? So we can say iris. I don't know why it keeps doing that. I think of my mouse is right there. So now let's do group by species and another pipe. So we're going to keep piping as we go. And then we want to do, um, let's see, about summarize. And we're going to say mean dot area equals um, mean is the function petal dot area. Now I'm coding on the fly. I haven't practiced this. So uh, it's really a little nerve wracking uh, to make sure I don't make any mistakes. But this should work. Now if we do that, we should get three numbers, there we go. Satosa, the mean area per petal, or the mean area for the petals of Satosa iris is 0.36 units, I don't have the units for this data set. Uh, Verus color is 5.7, and the Virginica is 11.29. So, already we can see, huh, Virginica iris flowers are much bigger, the petals are much bigger uh, than Satosa flowers, they're much smaller uh, iris uh, petals. So here we had just a data set of observations. We've now mutated, we've added a new variable, we've now uh, averaged by grouping. Uh, now usually you could also uh, ungroup at the end of this too. Sometimes helps. Um, and now we have something that didn't even exist in the raw data. We're now processing this data. Now I'll show you one final thing, because I know I've kind of gone way off the rails, 
Uh, but let's do one more thing. Let's make a graph using ggplot, make a simple, simple graph. Um, and that will kind of give you the bare bones to start practicing with other data sets. And I'll give you a data set at the end that you can practice with. So, okay, let's make a graph. So we'll start with Iris and we will, it usually doesn't do that. So that is a problem. Uh, you don't want anything after your pipe. You just want to hit the next line and you should be indented over once you do that. If you're not indented, uh, it won't work. Okay, so let's uh, use the function ggplot. ggplot is a great package that makes graphing very intuitive. It has a whole bunch of extras you can add on. You can manipulate this graph until the ends of the earth. You can make it your own special thing. Anything you want to change in a graph, you can do with the ggplot. I am by no means an expert. I just know kind of the bare bones. I'm like an advanced beginner in ggplot. But it'll get you there. Okay, so you open ggplot. The first thing you want to do is open the aesthetics function, AES. And here is where you're going to uh, say what your x and y axes are. So let's make uh, just a, a scatter plot. So x will be uh, petal uh, length. And we'll say y equals petal width. Okay, and let's spice it up since we have... Oh, well, we don't have that, so let's keep it like that. Okay, uh, and we'll say color uh, equals species. And then we'll add geom underscore point, open and close brackets. Now this should be the bare minimum you need to actually get a graph. Let's see if I'm right. Okay, so you can see it prints right here. So now we have pedal length by pedal width, and we have um, our points colored by species. So here we have Satosa. We can see the pedal length doesn't get above two, and the pedal width is very thin. So we have thin, short, little uh, flowers. We have the verse color here in the middle, and the virginica up here with long, wide petals. Now that shouldn't seem odd, right? Because when we looked at the summary of this, we saw that Virginica had the biggest flowers and Satosa had the smallest flowers. So when we look at our graph, that totally makes sense. So we're graphing this, we're analyzing this correctly so far. Very nice. Uh, and the other things you can do, like let's say you want to make a different theme. You can do theme, let's say APA. I've never used this theme before. Let's see what happens. So see, that's made it a lot more simple. Uh, in Geom Point, you can change things like the size. You can make the points bigger. Now we have bigger points. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do. This is just the basic. Um, cool. So now what we've done is we've introduced packages. We've installed Papaya. We'll talk more about Papaya in the next video because this one's already running quite long. Um, here we've talked about tidyverse and using the deplier verbs to start manipulating data. There are some great R deplier cheat sheets available, PDFs that I will send, put links to in the video description. We've read in data using read.csv. We've developed objects uh, using the arrow, right? So this is the less than and a dash it makes an arrow. So we've developed uh, our environment by creating objects. We've uh, altered data sets using filter. We've added new elements to a data set using mutate. We've summarized, so we've done some quick math to summarize to create uh, variables, as you've seen with the area of petals. And we've made a graph. And we did that on the fly in 20 minutes. And now all of this, we should be able to just uh, knit as an HTML, and this should give us an HTML file. Let's call this test HTML one. Let's see if it gives us an error. I'm not sure, but now we should be able to get an HTML. There we go. We could throw this up onto a website. We could update our lab. We could put it into a blog. There are a million things we could do. Here's the HTML file. We have uh, the actual code here. We have, this is the summary, it's a tibble that gives us the mean area of petals. 
And here's our graph. So quick, easy, and transparent. Um, something you could pick up and do in an afternoon um, or spend significantly longer doing as we'll get more and more involved in our analyses. This is all descriptive so far, but we'll start doing regressions and ANOVAs and different types of modeling. Um, so hopefully this kind of takes away some of the, uh, the spookiness around R and R Studio, and it's something that you can really dive in on. So what I would suggest is that, I don't know if you can hear the rumbling outside, it's a big thunderstorm. What I would suggest you do is look at the data set cars. So here we have a data set, 50 observations of two variables, speed and distance. Now, you might want to say, like, what are the relationships between speed and distance? That might be interesting. Uh, or play around in the IRIS data set more. Um, take these data sets that are already in R. You don't have to get your own. You feel free to look for your own data set or find a free data set from the government or something. But use IRIS, use CARS, and start getting a feel for how to kind of interact with your data on R. I think that's one of the most foreign concepts when transitioning from something like SPSS to R is how do I interact with my data? And this is the way to do it. So please do practice and I will uh, be making another video soon on using Papaya to start knitting into PDFs. And then from there, we'll start building our reproducible scientific paper. So until next time, make sure you like, favorite, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at NickFoxStats, um, send me comments if you have problems, I'll try to answer them or at least point you to a place where you can find answers, uh, and I look forward to uh, seeing you again soon. So have a good one.